Okay, we're back. Um, even though we've gone absolutely nowhere, especially for those of us watching on Twitch, I'm just seeing some people jump in. Joe the Frogman, thanks for coming by again, buddy. Ready, Diddy Spaghetti. <laughs> I like that. That's clever. Um, all right, so this will this will be kind of the second quote unquote half of a ship design video, which I will upload later to YouTube. Uh, speaking of which, those of you watching this on YouTube, thanks very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more Solaris Console Edition content. Uh, dingle my dongle so you are notified when I upload new videos. Uh, check out the other playlists. Uh, let's play Solaris Console. This one's in the Solaris Mechanics thread. Uh, it's more. It's um, gotten a more detailed, in-depth look at uh, how to effectively maximize your uh, your empire's um, gains while minimizing losses, that kind of stuff. Essentially how the game works. And then there's also uh, a tips and strategies section um, where I go over things like empire builds and that kind of stuff. Um, a little, Some of those videos are a little bit more on the fun side, but uh, you, know, you get the idea. Anyways, um, so those of you on Twitch, uh, watching this on Twitch right now, I started way earlier than I normally do because I got off work a lot earlier. Um, and for almost, for about the last hour, I've been babbling about how the ship designer works and how you want to build your ships. Now I'm going to actually go over some ideas for ship designs. As you can see, I have a crap load of ship designs. Now, I can't necessarily show off everything because, like I said earlier, I don't have certain things like... Oh, crap. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well. I don't have certain things like... Um, for example, the side jump drive, I don't have the precognitive interface, I don't have any of the um, enigmatic fortresses technologies like enigmatic deflectors or um, enigmatic power cores, which is the best power core. But I will be reminding everybody of that pretty frequently. Um, so I've got a long list of ship suggestions here. The things that I don't have saved right now, I will uh, go over later, um, but those would be um, ideas for ship designs when dealing with fallen or awakened empires, because fallen and awakened empires, uh, depending on which kind of fallen empire it is, it's always using the same ship design. AI empires, they're a little more unpredictable, so you have to... Uh, get like a little suicide corvette that just flies off if you uh, like if this is if you're at war with somebody send off a little suicide corvette that flies off and right at the start of a battle before your corvette gets blown to smithereens pause the game check out their fleet's ship designs uh so that you can go ah oh, they're using these ah here they're using those ah they have lots of shields so either you, i either want weapons that do more shield damage or penetrate shields ah they're using lots of weapons that do more shield damage so i want to forego shields and slap on more armor ah they have weapons that have not a lot of range so i can use weapons that have i can use more large weapon slots to try and outrange them you know that kind of crap um, I'm going to stop talking like that for the rest of my life. That kind of killed some brain cells. Anyways. Excuse me. So you can do it that way, or if you have previously seen uh, their ships in battle with somebody else, you can watch that fight and pause it and look at their ships then. This is if you fully expect to go to war with, some, uh, with an empire sometime in the future. Um, so we have... I'm going to start with going through some Corvette designs, then Destroyer designs, then uh, Cruiser designs, and finally Battleship designs. I'm not going to talk about things like Defense Stations because you should be able to get an idea of that um, from going through this. Uh, what I will go over with Defense Platforms and that kind of stuff is they have, they've they got these really good core components. Um, things like the Subspace Snare, which um, what it essentially does is any enemy ships jumping into a system where you have a de defense station with the subspace snare, they'll jump right on top of this defense station. So these are really good for slowing down incoming hostile ships. And you can put them on like really cheap, really crappy little defense stations, like the, the, the weakest, cheapest ones you can build, and it will still slow down hostile forces. You can also equip them with things like the shield dampener, which reduces enemy shield hit points and their shield regeneration, or the quantum destabilizer, which reduces their fire rate, or proximity mines, which can do some damage to their ships um, 
to further you know debuff their ships or buff your own with the nanobot cloud which increases monthly hull regen and the capacitor field which increases monthly shield regen for allied ships in the area so defense stations uh have their own use uh, I highly recommend not ignoring them. I know I am terrible for ignoring them because I'd rather have more ships that I can actually move around and smash the shit out of my opponents uh, rather than, you know, more defense stations that I have to have my ships kind of hanging around to actually get use of the, out of them. Yeah, yeah, shut up. I don't care. All right, so let's talk about some Corvette designs. Now, at the start of the game, you have what are called naked Corvettes, and this is largely what they look like. They have the basic Hyperdrive 1, the basic combat computer, which does absolutely nothing, chemical thrusters, which do absolutely nothing, and the ship-mounted radar system, which is the basic sensors, and they have a very small sensor range. Uh, obviously, these three slots, I just equipped mass drivers for the hell of it, but not... Your Corvettes won't always have these. They could have... Um, oh, jeez. Let me activate... Uh, they could have nuclear missiles, because you started with missiles. They could have red lasers, because you started with lasers. But this is essentially the gist of it. Uh, these are your naked Corvettes. Um, the crazy thing about naked Corvettes is that they are actually very efficient. They have a very low cost, only 62 minerals. They build fast because they're a Corvette. They normally build in 60 days, but you can drop that down to like 30 or even a little over 20 days, I think 23 days. They have a very low maintenance cost as well. 0.25 energy credits and 0.18 minerals per month. Um, the only downside is that, you know, they die fast. They don't have a lot of hull points. Um, and all that jazz. They still have high evasion because they're a Corvette. Plus 60 evasion. Um, yeah. Ooh, excuse me. They're cheap. They build fast. You can actually use them for an entire game so long as you build disgustingly, overwhelmingly huge amounts of numbers of them. And I've done this uh, twice now where I tried to play a full game with nothing but naked Corvettes. Both times I did get wrecked in the later game because I simply just did not build enough naked Corvettes prior to a big ass battle. Um, they have a lot of drawbacks. It, it takes them a long time to work from system to system with their crappy Hyperdrive One, um, and it takes them. A, it, they're a lot slower than even some bigger ships that just have better thrusters because they only have chemical thrusters, and it's it's sometimes painful. Um, but like I said, they're cheap. They come out quickly. Uh, in the beginning of the game, when you're when you're uh, just starting out, I would you definitely want to get like seven of these online and built, because when the pirate when the pirate event happens, because you have built a frontier outpost or two, or you have colonized uh, your first colony, or like for lack of a better term, uh, the pirate event happens, and that's where there are four pirate raiders that come in. And they use the same starting weapons that you had, uh, but the raider design is different because they have, um, I believe, a medium and a small weapon slot, and they have some deflectors. So you need at least seven of your own naked corvettes to actually take them out. You'll still probably lose one, um, but you can deal with them. And then, like I said, you can spam these for the rest of the game. But this is largely what your starter corvette at the very beginning of the game will look like. Um... I don't want to save the ship designs. Okay, so the upgraded design. This is probably what your Corvette will look like uh, maybe 40 to 50 years into the game. Once you start getting some some better technologies like Hyperdrive 2, the intermediate combat computer, ion thrusters, ship-mounted gravitic sensors. So like Tier 2 technologies. Um, you have some deflectors online as well as additional weapons. You have a small plasma thrower, proton torpedoes, afterburners, and you have the cold fusion reactors um, for power. So this is largely, you know, probably what your Corvette will look like once you have uh, some more technologies, uh, some better weapons and whatnot. This is actually a very effective Corvette setup to use in the middle stages of the game between, you know, whenever you get this, say, 30, 35 years in to about... Um, 80 years in and not specifically these weapons uh, you'll probably want to upgrade these weapons once you get say neutron torpedoes or the plasma launcher slash plasma cannon and obviously you'll be upgrading the core components like your sensors your thrusters your combat computer uh, but this is probably what it will look like because you won't really have anything else aside from afterburners maybe crystal infused plating um, but you know that'll that'll probably be it for your upgraded class corvette now, uh, 
I got a suggestion for an endgame sauce. Or what the hell am I reading? Endgame sauce, excuse me. An, an endgame <laughs> kind of Corvette. It's a lot like the previous Corvette. As you can see, we still have the afterburners. We have the uh, energy torpedo. It's just upgraded to a neutron torpedo. And we have the small plasma cannon. We have the better technology uh, with the hyperdrive 3, sentient combat computer, impulse thrusters, ship mounted tachyon sensors. Uh, and we need, uh, we have better technologies on the ship, so we need more power plants. Had to drop one thing of shields to equip the hyper shields. Uh, so this is probably what your endgame Corvette will look like. It's very effective because uh, both of these weapons are energy types. They will gain the same bonuses from the same repeatables. And you have your neutron torpedoes to totally shred shields, plus your plasma cannons to shred through armor and do damage directly to enemy hulls once those shields have been dropped. Uh, your neutron torpedoes have a range of 70, so they will shoot first long before your small plasma cannons, which only have a range of 40. Um, so this is, this is a pretty effective all-purpose Corvette setup to use in conjunction with other ships in your fleet. Um, obviously, this isn't the be-all, end-all. Oh, I use this all the, all the bloody time. Uh, the decision is ultimately up to you, and like I said, you're better off specifically tailoring your, your ships to combat what you're facing. Um, for example, maybe if you have the um, precognitive interface, which is a um, psionic technology from Breaching the Shroud, and I do believe it drastically increases the evasion of your Corvettes by an additional plus five compared to this sentient combat computer. Um, you can slap that on to give your Corvettes like 80% evasion instead of just 75% evasion. So, you know, that's cool. Um, that's that's largely kind of the gist of it. Um, so here's, a, here's an idea that I have for a design against using... Uh, to use against the Prothoran Scourge. Um, so again, we have the best um, core components we can equip and... Three small cutting lasers. Why small cutting lasers? They ignore 100% of armor. Um, and then for the utility components, just enough reactors to power the ship with regenerative hull tissue and as much armor as you can put on. Uh, scourge weapons do both increased shield damage and have some armor ignore. However, they have more weapons with better bonuses to shield damage than they have weapons with armor ignore. So it is more cost efficient and your ships will, uh, or sorry, I should say, they should survive better uh, to, or, I, you know, I'm not going to say survive better because you'll still take losses. Um, your ships will uh, survive longer in a fight to deal more damage. And the, the reason why I suggest cutting lasers is because the, the Scourge has no shields. Um, they're, all of their vessels have armor, and as I've said, numerous times the cutting lasers have 100% armor ignore you could simply do like plasma cannons because those have more overall damage however they have lower armor ignore so the damage from the 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 um, sorry the damage reduction from the scourge armor might very well knock the actual damage from your plasma cannons down to about the same level as your um yeah, what's it called? Your cutting lasers. The difference being the cutting laser uses less power and costs less minerals to uh, equip on the ship. Um, this is, again, this is more down to personal preference. If you want to go plasma cannons, great. Uh, you could also do a torpedo boat where you throw on, you know, plasma or a cutting laser, mining laser, and devastator torpedoes. Um, the Scourge does have... Uh, their own equivalent of point defense. They can shoot down point defense targets, but Devastator Torpedoes, they ignore 50% of armor. They do a big butt ton of damage uh, if they hit their target, and they can be useful if you want to, you know, if you want to do this kind of a setup. You'll still want to do regen hull, regen hull tissue, uh, as many reactors as you need. Do, do, do. I need a medium reactor still. Bloop, there we go. And then Neutronium Armor up the wazoo. Can we replace one of these? No, we cannot. Um, so, I mean, like, this works too. If, if you want. As I said, entirely personal preference. Uh, I'm not going to save that ship design. Uh, now, I guess the Unbidden 
Eh, Corvette's not not so great because the unbiz the unbidden can really poop on them. Uh, their mass drivers do a lot of damage. Um, I kind of forgot to mention this before. Uh, I, I personally still think the best thing to do against an endgame crisis, namely the Scourge or the, un, or the Unbidden, or, well, extra-dimensional invaders, forego anything smaller than a battle than a battleship and just mass battleships. That is my personal preference, because you can equip the biggest, longest-range guns that do the most damage, and you'll take the least amount of losses, because you don't have ships like your Corvettes and Cruisers rushing in to get right in the face of the enemy where they'll be in range of all their weapons. Now against the Unbidden, you can go one of two ways. Torpedo boat with a small phase disruptor um, and a Devastator torpedo to penetrate Unbidden shields, or you can go with a Neutron torpedo. Uh, either one really works, but, in, uh, but the defenses are different. With the Unbidden, you want a shield capacitor and shields. So in this case, the small hyper shields. Um, they do have 50% shield penetration and 50% armor ignore, so you want your shields to be absorbing as much of that incoming damage as possible. Um, with a shield capacitor, it increases their shield regen. So uh, that'll help out. Um, I don't really recommend a different design. You know, like I said, phase disruptor and either neutron torpedoes to, if you want your Corvettes to really, really, really shred those unbidden shields. Uh, or if you want them to also do some damage directly to their hull, because uh, unbidden ships do not self-repair. If you do damage to their ship's hull, that damage will stay there until you destroy that ship. Um, so if you want them to penetrate shields and just deal damage straight to their hull, uh, every time you have a fight with your corvettes, then throw on Devastator torpedoes. That's fine, too. Uh, let's back out of this. And then I've got what I dubbed the Awesome Sauce Class Corvette. This is if you get really good technologies. Um, so say you actually decide to use the jump drive, great, throw that on. Say you have the precognitive interface, sure, throw that on too. Say you have psi sh shields, which in this case I do, throw those on. Say you have dragon scale armor, which in this particular save file I do, sure, you can use that too if you can throw it on. If I had other things like the enigmatic reactors or the enigmatic power core, which are better than zero point reactors, I would be throwing those on. If you have something like the enigmatic encoder or decoder, you might want to throw that on. Um, there's some components that I just don't have because at the current state of console, it's just impossible to get all that stuff in a single go because you only get one of those enigmatic fortress technologies. And one of them is enigmatic deflectors, which is just as good as, sci as psionic shields, as a matter of fact. Um, so that's really about it. Um, this this is largely like if you if you get the best technologies and you want to use them, you're not afraid of using the jump drive um, and summoning the unbidden. You act, breach the shroud and get your psionic shields, which give you um, the highest amount of shield hit points and more uh, shield regen than the same size of of hyper shields. So that's pretty good. And again, if you are putting shields. On things like your Corvettes. I said this previously, but you're better off using more uh, small versions of the sh of shields than large. Um, so I'll go over this again. So let's take a look at the medium deflector and the small deflector really quick. So the medium deflector has 40 shield hit points, 2.4 shield regeneration. The small deflector, 20 shield hit points, 1.2 shield regeneration. Okay, that's fine. That makes sense. However, once we get to even just improved deflectors, which is this tier 2 uh, shields, we have 60 points of shields on the medium, and they have 3.2 shield regen. However, the small has 30 shield hit points, but 1.8 shield regen. So, if we equip two small improved deflectors, we still have the 60 hit points of a medium, but instead of only 3.2 shield regen, we have 3.6. This dichotomy, this advantage of better shield regen with smaller shields uh, goes all the way up to, it. like it gets better and better with um, higher technology shields, including size shields. So hyper shields, 210 shield hit points for the medium and 5.6 shield regen. The small hyper shields, uh, 105 hit points. So two of them will have the same hit points, but 3.6 shield regen. 
So you're looking at 7.2 shield regen with two small hyper shields over a single medium hyper shield. The same amount of hit points, but better regen. Um, and the same is true for psy psionic shields, which is even more disgusting, as a matter of fact. 300 shield hit points and 6.6 .6 shield regen on a medium. On a small, 150 shield hit points, 4.6 shield regen per small component. So two smalls is actually 9.2 shield regen compared to 6.6 .6 on a single medium. Um, so yeah, I think you get the idea. This, the exact same is true of the enigmatic deflectors because those have the same values as um, side shields. So do be aware of that. Um, I don't care if it doesn't have enough power. Bugger off. Okay, so that's kind of like my suggestions for Corvettes. We'll get into um, Fallen Empires later after I go through all these. So, uh, Destroyers. These come a little bit later in the game, obviously. They're the first uh, bigger ship after you get your Corvettes. This is the quote-unquote naked Destroyer. You, you can get your Destroyers really early. Um, you probably still have all your basic core components, and no weapons better than your starting weapon. So I just slapped red lasers on this thing. I would suggest you go with uh, these particular sections of your destroyers because it's five guns compared to, say, an artillery bow, which has one large slot, and a gunship stern, which has one medium slot. That's two guns. Uh, okay, let's put on a large red laser and a medium red laser. We can see there the projected average damage is 10.76 per day because we only have two guns. Whereas when we open that this one back up, not much different, but we have five guns. 10.98 damage per day. Um, like I said, not a huge deal, but I'll take the five guns over the two guns uh, any day of the week. Not to mention these guns are smaller. So they have better accuracy and tracking values, so they are much more likely to actually hit their targets. It also means less range than a large, but, you know, it's up to you. If you want your destroyers to start utilizing uh, the enhanced range of large weapon slots, go for it. Or even if you want to use, want them to use the medium weapon slots, you can do a gunship bow and gunship stern. That's fine, too. Um, but let's just reopen that up. But this is largely what your first destroyer will look like because you have no auxiliary components still maybe you have after her burners very unlikely um, but instead of the small fission reactors I throw on small fusion reactors because it's like well by this time you probably have uh, the next level of uh, ship reactor but everything else is just like the tier one you might have deflectors by then that's great you can start putting them on your ships and your destroyers will probably start off with them uh, so that would be a, a quote-unquote naked destroyer. Now, we got the mid-game class destroyer. Um, this is kind of just a basic setup. We got the tier 3 uh, reactors, and I'm starting to put those in the medium slots because uh, they have more power generation. You have better core components like Hyperdrive 2, Intermediate Combat Computer, Ion Thrusters, Ship Mounted Gravitic Sensors. I would say this is probably the point where you want to start using some point defense in your fleet. Especially if you're regularly dealing with um, enemies that have missiles, namely the little neutral pirate fleets because those have missiles. Um, or an enemy AI that is using missiles. So you can do a pick ship bow, an interceptor ship stern. You still have four guns for shooting, but you have some point defense in, in the amount of one per destroyer to shoot down incoming missiles. Probably no ex auxiliary components still. Maybe you have afterburners, but yeah, you don't really want to use those on destroyers anyways. And filling the remaining slots with as many deflectors as possible. Or you could just slap on armor if uh, the enemy you're facing has uh, good anti-shield weapons like mass drivers. Uh, and you, you, know, you want to slap on armor instead. However, since you're, mo since you're most likely going after things like void clouds, space amoebas... And uh, in particular, the ancient mining drones. Uh, you're, you know, those neutral things. You're kind of just better off going with shields because, like I said, it's a second layer of hit points. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what I dubbed the Sentinel class destroyer. Um, honestly, this is kind of my go-to setup for uh, a destroyer that I'm using in the, in the late game, and I would only be using it if I know I'm going to be fighting an enemy that uses. Um, that uses missiles and torpedoes and maybe mixes some strike craft in there. That's a maybe. 
Uh, the flak will still shoot down incoming missiles and torpedoes, uh, but the point defense, the two things of point defense will also do that. Um, destroyers tend to hang back at at long range, not as far back as your battleships, but they'll be in front of them. So at this point in the game, with this design, I'm only building them to act as a screen against incoming strike craft and missiles and that kind of stuff for my battleships. That's about it. Uh, they also have two small plasma cannons, which helps, helps them deal with enemy corvettes. Enemy corvettes have high evasion. They get in close. These plasma cannons will help uh, will help take them out. Uh, the best equipment I can put on, which you will probably get in most games, Hyperdrive 3, Sentient Combat Computer, Impulse Thrusters, uh, Tachyon Sensors, that kind of stuff. Zero point power, hyper shields, and regenerative hull tissue. Uh, you could put on a shield capacitor if you want, but I do kind of like having... Uh, a bunch of shields that you know automatically regen and then you can have your hull regenerating as well with the regenerative hull tissue um, so that's kind of an interesting design like I said you can do this however you want another possible one is to actually change it up where uh, you have one extra defensive utility component slot on your destroyer and you do this by slightly changing things you go with a picket ship bow and a gunship stern. So what this essentially does, this is the destroyer is the only class of ship that does this. Um, instead of having the same amount of weapon slots, uh, you we've actually lost uh, a thing of point defense, but we've gained another medium utility slot. So we can throw on regenerative hull tissue. Uh, let's do a bunch of hyper shields again. Um, and then we'll throw on some zero point reactors. So we have a lot of small hyper shields, but if we had the power, we could throw on another little thing of hyper shields. Maybe we would just want to trade this just to give our ship more shield hit points. Um, you know, that's possible too. Or you just want to give it more excess power to increase its, uh, its damage output and its evasion. You know, whatever you want to do, whatever works for you. However, now we have a lot of power, so we also could do a shield capacitor. That also works. Uh, we also might have enough power to equip size shields instead of hyper shield. Whoops, instead of hyper shields. There we go. That works too. This largely does the same thing, but as I said, you are essentially dropping a point defense slot for an extra medium utility component slot. Uh, so, you know, slap in more power, slap in more shields, slap in an armor thing, whatever. I don't want to save the ship design. Give me a moment. Um, this is my recommend recommendation for d if you have um, a scourge crisis coming in. Um, and of course, like I said, this is not the be-all, end-all way. You totally could do the previous destroyer design, the Sentinel class that I just showed you. Uh, but this one works too, I, I suppose. You have a large plasma cannon with a range of 80 to allow your destroyer to lob some balls of piping hot green love at the enemy at the scourge from a fair ways away because they're hanging back with your battleships and then they still have two slots of point defense um no flak on the destroyer because i tend to put flak on my battleships when dealing with dealing with the scourge so you can you know cross design in that method we've got just enough reactors to put us in the positive for power and again uh, lots of armor as much as we can put on and a thing of regenerative hull tissue um the sentient combat computer in this case drastically increases tra tracking and chance to hit. Um, so even against enemy ships with uh, pretty decent evasion, the sentient combat computer, because our only real offensive weapon is the large plasma cannon, it will actually have a decent amount of accuracy. Even though it only has 5% tracking, that's being increased by 14. Um, so it's got more like 19% um, uh, tracking just from that. Then we get another plus nine from the tachyon, uh, or from the tachyon sensor. So 28% tracking. Uh, so it'll still maintain a decent amount of accuracy and be able to hit smaller scourge ships that way. Uh, you could, of course, I, I do believe in an, a precognitive interface, um, which is the um, the psionic computer. I do believe that also increases tracking on the destroyer. Uh, so you could probably use that as well. Or the Enigmatic Decoder from the Enigmatic Fortress, which, again, and, but that means you're dropping the regenerative hull tissue for that just to increase your tracking. I don't really recommend doing that. Uh, the Unbidden Class Destroyer. 
uh, since this hangs back, you throw on a thing of kinetic artillery. Um, as you may have noticed in our la in our last episode with the Blorg, um, staying back and shooting at the Unbidden from range is seems to be the way to go. Um, so a large an artillery bow, so that you can throw on a large slot, and that's the only slot that you can put kinetic artillery in. Uh, long range, big damage, um, bonus damage to shields, so it'll help drop those shields quickly, and only the 20%, excuse me, only the 20% armor ignore, but this will still do quite a bit of damage from very far away against the Unbidden. And then a gunship stern with a medium phased disruptor. Um, probably would not see much play from this unless you let the battle drag out and you're actually trying to wipe out the Unbidden fleet, and then things get uh, a lot more close range. Um, or you simply cannot emergency FTL before the shorter range weapons come into play. Um, again, enough reactors to power the ship with a shield capacitor and as many small hyper shield components as possible. If you have better shields like enigmatic deflectors or, shy sh or size shields, sure, use those um, if you can equip them, provided you have the power. So that's the Unbidden Destroyer. And then the Super Duper Class Destroyer. This is if you use the... If you get the some of the rarer technologies and you want to use them, like jump drives, or uh, dragon scale armor, or psionic shields. So I only did two things of psionic shields in this case. Um, this is, like I said earlier, changing to the picket ship bow, which gives you an extra, th which drops one thing of point defense. You can still have one, uh, and then two small plasma cannons with a flak artillery. But we, get a, we gain an extra medium utility slot now because the small psionic shields generate more shield hit points than the small hyper shields. We don't need to use as many of them. Um, the jump drives also use more power than the hyperdrive 3, I do believe. Actually, no, sorry, they do not. Um, and we got the regenerative hull tissue again. And we have a, a lot better armor on this because we have several things of dragon scale armor. So... That's just kind of an idea of what you could do with your destroyers. I largely don't really use destroyers unless, as I said, I need a second screen against enemy missiles and strike craft, um, mostly to protect my battleships. Um, I actually didn't mention that about my corvettes either. Come late game, I don't really use corvettes a heck of a lot unless I'm going against a uh, fallen or awakened, empi awakened empire. Like I said, crisis. I largely just, just spam battleships. And uh, with the Corvettes, I stick with that uh, plasma cannon plus neutron torpedo that's really good against all the Fallen Empires pretty much because they do they all do use quite a bit of shields. Cruisers! Let me take a sip of water first. I'm doing a lot of talking. Hey, excuse me. Okay, so this is the Nude Class Cruiser. Uh, by the time you get Cruisers, you probably have better quite a bit better tech than when you got your um, middle, when you got your blah, 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 your destroyers. Um, so I figure that by the time you get your cruisers, it'll be around the same time that you have this mid-game destroyer. So the mid-game destroyer has an intermediate combat computer, ion thrusters, ship-mounted gravitic sensors, hyperdrive 2, blue lasers, improved deflectors, cold fusion reactors, that kind of stuff. So... The nude cruiser, same thing. Blue lasers, um, deflectors, or maybe improved deflectors, cold fusion reactors, and then the same kind of components. You have intermediate combat computer, hyperdrive 2, ion thrusters, gravitic sensors. Um, your first cruiser design, this is pretty much the go-to. Broadside bow, broadside core, broadside stern. Slap on as many of those medium-sized guns as you can. Uh, these cruisers... Do, they, they will hand out a lot of damage uh, in once once you get them in the game, once you get them online, once you get them built. Um, also, combat computers for cruisers increase fire rates. So this one, the intermediate combat computer, increases fire rate by 5%. Um, so it's actually going to be handing out even more damage than it says in the lower left there. Um, so just enough power to power the ship and then, you know, shields wherever you can. Uh, unless you're fighting against an enemy that uses anti-shield weapons, like kinetic weapons. But uh, this is effective. Uh, this is a pretty effective all-rounder when you first get your cruisers, especially against, the, like I said, those neutral enemies. 
space amoeba, um, ancient ancient mining drones, and um, void clouds. Obviously, mass drivers would be better against void clouds because they do have shields, but you know whatever. So that would probably be what your very first cruiser looks like. So then now we have the enhanced cruiser. This is uh, you know you get some better technologies. The advanced combat computer, increased fire rate, and and I do believe increased chance to hit as well. Hyperdrive is the same. Plasma thrusters, um, subspace sensors, improved deflectors. You've got antimatter reactors. You have some armor coming online by this point. It's still just broadside bow, broadside core, broadside stern with better weapons. In this case, UV lasers. So not much different there. Um, just, you know, being more efficient by using, you know, better reactors to power your better technologies, like your better combat computers and your... Uh, your deflectors that are being improved by this point i would say the only auxiliary uh thing to use would be crystal infused or crystal forged plating if you have either of those because those increase ship hull points and do not use extra power if you have regenerative hull tissue uh which i gotta say is probably unlikely then that works too i don't want really to suggest shield capacitors because those use extra power um and afterburners and eh, not really I don't really recommend using those on cruisers anyways. Um, but yeah, this this is probably what your um, mid-game cruiser is going to look like. Well, sorry, your cruiser after you have gotten it and it's, you know, later on in the mid-game um, will probably wind up looking something like this. As I said, doesn't have to. It's up to you. If you think I'm talking out my ass and want to do something completely different, go for it. I really don't care. Um, and then end game. Okay, this... <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking with this one, but this is actually a fairly effective uh, cruiser setup for the late game. It's it's really stupid, in my opinion, but it, it does kind of work. Because cruisers get in close, and they're actually at the very front of, of a fleet when, you, when your fleet is flying around or just sitting there in formation. Uh, so they'll probably be the first ones shooting at the enemies and getting shot at. Um... Then the Corvettes, which are faster, will swarm in and also get right in the enemy's faces. Um, so, because cruisers are on the front line, I thought, yeah, maybe I'll try this. And it actually turned out, it's it's moderately effective. Uh, you got your best versions of uh, everything up here. Thrusters, computer, sensors, and hyperdrive. The sentient combat computer increases cruiser fire rate by 15%. That's nothing to scoff at. Um, so the torpedo bow and torpedo core gives us three neutron torpedo launchers to totally ravage enemy shields buttholes and they don't like it uh, we also have four small slots with plasma cannons um, so very very short range but the cruisers will be lobbing these neutron torpedoes from a fair range probably about the same range that your battleships will start engaging with their long range kinetic artillery or XL weapons and your cruisers will just start dropping those enemy shields with this many torpedo launchers. Uh, they're also on the front line, so maybe some protection from enemy missiles or more notably strike craft with a flak artillery on the very back. Uh, you have to equip a broadside stern for that because flak can only be on medium slots. Um, at this point, it's kind of a balanced loadout. We've got three medium hyper shields, two medium neutronium armor, a thing of regenerative hull tissue, and a shield capacitor. Yeah, fair, fairly balanced kind of kind of setup. We have anti-shield weapons. We have anti-armor weapons. Um, you know, in, in in terms of effectiveness, it's okay. It's an all right all rounder. <laughs> but, but like I said, this is just a suggestion. If you wanted to throw on you know three Devastator torpedoes instead, by all means, do that. They caught. They are way less expensive, and use way less power. So you can actually probably drop reactor and put on another thing of hyper shields if you want it go nuts <laughs> um okay um we also have the compensator class cruiser this is just if you want to hang back and shoot things at really long range with really big guns so we've got the artillery bow artillery core and broadside stern uh so that gives us two large slots for two kinetic artillery and then we have two medium slots and i just throw on flak artillery for the hell of it um if the enemy had something like um, Strikecraft. Uh, again, fairly balanced uh, regenerative hull tissue and shield capacitor for the auxiliary slots, enough power to power the ship. 
Um, a bunch, as many shields as we can fit on, and a bunch of armor as well. And of course, the best stuff that you can put on here. Um, I kind of liked this setup in one particular game. This would probably be an okay setup against the Unbidden. Let me just say that right now. Except instead of flak, you change it to phase disruptors in the medium slots. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, actually, against Unbidden. Well, that design will be coming up later. Uh, this actually works okay because the Ascension Combat Computer increases fire rate by 15%. And seeing as Kinetic Artillery kind of has a crappy refire time, um, it takes like, like it, it shoots about half as much as many other weapons in the game. Uh, that increase in fire rate with the Ascension Combat Computer is pretty tits. So uh, that's just an idea that I had one time. Uh, so now we've got the Super Hot Fire class cruiser. This is another late game cruiser idea where you just slap on broadside brow, broadside core, broadside stern, and equip all plasma weapons. Again, fairly balanced loadout, as many shields as we can, enough reactors to power the ship, just one thing of neutronium armor, but you can change that if you want. One thing of rege regenerative hull tissue and a shield capacitor and the best core components we can find. Again, sentient combat computer increasing the fire rate. These plasma cannons are going off like crazy. Um, so, I called it Super Hot Fire because they're lobbing all sorts of green balls of love like like mad. Um, okay, so, the Prothoran Cruiser. This is, eh, this one was tough. I, and cru I don't really recommend using cruisers against the Prothoran because they'll just get right in their face and probably get shredded. Um, but you can use this design to try and increase your, your cruiser's overall effectiveness at the cheapest cost. Um, again, the best core components we can put on. Broadside bow with two plasma cannons. And since cruisers are on the front line, I went huge into the anti-scourge missile, anti-scourge strike craft defenses. Uh, we've got two slots for guardian point defense. A bomber wing to do more damage to their enemy ships. However, if you want to further increase the anti-strike craft capabilities of this design, you could throw on another fighter wing instead. And then, of course, flak artillery to shoot down Scourge Strike Craft. Enough reactors to power the ship, armor everywhere else, and two things of regenerative hull tissue. With this much neutronium armor, our armor values are up to 83%. So, that's a lot of armor. Um, could be effective. I mean, like I said, there's, there's, you can, you can try other stuff. I'd still just recommend, you know, lots of plasma if you want, lots of plasma, lots of armor, regenerative hull tissue. You could even do the super hot fire design that we just looked at, with all armor. Maybe that'll work. Eh, I don't really recommend it though because uh, a lot of the incoming scour scourge damage will be from their strike craft and their missiles, so your cruisers will probably take heavy losses. Uh, without those defenses that I just showed you. Now, the Extra Dimensional Invaders class cruiser. Um, we actually just talked about that earlier. This is essentially the Compensator class, except instead of flak, we have Medium Phase Disruptor, and we ditched all of the armor to throw on nothing but sh as many shields as possible and two, th two shield capacitors. Um, so, again, this works pretty well because the Sentient Combat Computer increases fire rate a lot, so your cruisers will get lots of shots off uh, before they close the gap on the uh, un unbidden fleets. Now, if possible, you can drop this large thing of hyper shields and throw on two mediums over here. In fact, I recommend doing that because, like I said, that gives you better shield regen. So this would be the proper extra dimensional invaders crash class cruiser, in my opinion. Um, range has proven to be king against the unbidden. You're better off slapping on as much kinetic artillery as you can, blasting them from long range before their weapons can even get close enough. I'm actually going to save that ship design. Uh, let's see. What was? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimate. So this is if you get super good, awesome, excellent, mega wicked technologies. Uh, we've got the jump drives. We don't have the precognitive interface, but that's fine because Ascension Combat Computer still gives better fire rate bonus to your cruisers, so I would leave that on anyways. Impulse thrusters, tachyon centers. We've got some dragon scale armor and psionic shields, balanced loadout, shield capacitor plus regenerative hull tissue, enough reactors to power the ship. Torpedo bow with a single neutron torpedo launcher and two small plasma cannons. Uh, a hangar core 
with two things of point defense and a bomber wing, or you could do a fighter wing for more anti-strike craft capabilities, and a broadside stern for flak artillery. This is a much more defensive-oriented late-game cruiser setup with excellent technologies if you manage to get them. Um, this is, act honestly, I've used this cruiser setup quite a bit in, in the later stages of games, and it's actually surprisingly effective. Um, your cruisers are pretty tough, so they take quite a beating and, uh, before you know you start losing them. And they're very defensive oriented. So if the enemy hit, uses, like I said, a bunch of strike craft and missiles, they'll be they'll be able to. Uh, they'll, they're kind of like the first the first line against those defenses. Um, they're still doing a bunch of damage though because you got a neutron torpedo launcher plus two small plasma cannons. Um, not a huge amount of offensive weapons, but. Uh, they'll get in close. This combines really nicely with the Neutron Torpedo Corvette because you essentially have uh, both of your ships that are getting in the face of the enemy's fleet at near point blank. They're both lobbing Neutron Torpedoes to shred enemy shields. Uh, and on top of that, you can have some bombers coming in that penetrate enemy shields to do even more damage. And you've got an initial uh, wall of uh, point defense and, art and artillery and flak artillery, sorry, to shoot down pesky enemy missiles and strike craft. Um, okay, let's move on to battleships. So we've got the newbie class battleship. This is probably what your battleship uh, technologies, what, sorry, this is probably what your empire's technologies will be by the time you get battleships. Uh, hyperdrive 2, intermediate combat computer, ion thrusters, and gravity sensors. Um, UV lasers, so kind of like not your naked, not your first level cruisers, but like your second level cruisers because you'll get the battleships afterwards. Um, Antimatter reactors where possible, just enough to power the ship. And then a bunch of large shields. Um, this works, as I said, works against neutral enemies. Broadside bow, broadside core, broadside stern. As many guns as possible. As many ugly ass guns as possible. Uh, we got three large weapons still. We have five medium weapons, so that's actually pretty balanced. And then for the short range, we've got two small weapons, and this was all UV lasers. Of course, if this was, like, say you, you were using mass drivers, and you had the Tier 3 mass drivers, which are rail guns, you know, slap on a boatload of rail guns. That works, too. Uh, whatever you feel like. That, but, as I said, this is probably what your um, first kind of battleships will look like. Just as many guns as possible. Um, you could also just go with uh, artillery bow like crazy. This, we'll see what the kind of damage this does. Our current damage is 57.71. Let's do all large class weapons. And we're doing UVs, lasers. Do, 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 do. So this works too. Theoretically, more damage per day with six large UV lasers. However, as I said before, they have worse accuracy and tracking than the medium and small lasers. So the actual damage output may be higher with the broadside uh, battleship uh, loadout simply because their weapons are hitting more often. Uh, not gonna save that ship design. I don't care, go away. Um, progressive battleships. So like this is like once you get some more technologies online and you are upgrading your battleship for the first or the second time or so. Um, so it's like, yeah, I got I got my first XL weapon. I got the particle lance, man. Or maybe you got the mega cannon, whatever. Um, but this is like kind of, you know, late game cruiser design before you get like the top tier technologies and finish getting those... Uh, those high-end weapons and defensive stuff. Still Hyperdrive 2, Advanced Combat Computer, Plasma Thrusters, Subspace Sensors. We've got a Particle Lance on the bow. We've got a Hangar Core with four Medium Plasma Cannons, which is actually pretty effective. Uh, and an Amoeba Flagella. Why an Amoeba Flagella? Well, uh, it was actually proven that the Amoeba Flagella is um, better than improved... Strike craft. They're better than the tier two strike craft, but worse than the tier three strike craft. Um, so they're, they're not bad. They're also they also require less power and cost less minerals than the improved uh, fighter and bomber wings. Um, so if you have them, yeah, try them out. Use them. Uh, broadside stern. Two things of flak artillery. Just uh, some defenses against uh, missiles and enemy strike craft if if necessary. Uh, we've got a pretty balanced loadout here again. Enough 
reactors to power everything. Uh, several things of large shields, two things of uh, large plasteel armor, the tier 3 armor, uh, and tier 3 shields. Again, a shield capacitor and regenerative hull tissue. Regenerative hull tissue. Um, this might be the kind of battleship setup you look that you have by this point. Of course, as I said, if you were using kinetic weapons, maybe you have a bunch of advanced rail guns instead of uh, medium plasma cannons. Or, as I said earlier, a mega cannon instead. You know, whatever. Um, well rounded. I don't know what this looks like. Huh. Okay. This is an interesting idea. So, this is with your top tier technologies. Um, we've got a spinal mount bow with a broadside core and a broadside stern. Now, the spinal mount bow is using a giga cannon. We've got two things of kinetic artillery, and the two medium slots are Stormfire Auto Cannons, <laughs> and two things of flak artillery to defend against strike craft if they're a problem. Uh, balanced defensive loadout, two things of armor, three things of hyper shields, uh, a shield capacitor, and regenerative hull tissue, and then enough reactors to power everything. I don't know what I was thinking when I designed this ship. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Uh, but it's using 100% uh, kinetic weapons, Stormfire Auto Cannons, Kinetic Artillery, Giga Cannon, and even the Flak Artillery. That's all kinetic weapons. So they will benefit from bonuses to kinetic damage and fire rate, namely the repeatables they get in the late game. So, I don't know. This could be fun. Try it out. By the time stuff gets in range of your Stormfire Auto Cannons, they're also in range of the Flak Artillery. I don't know what the hell I was thinking with that. <laughs> Okay, uh, carrier class battleship. Um, so just like last time, top uh, top end uh, core components. Uh, spinal mount bow, still a giga cannon. And then this time we've got an artillery stern with kinetic artillery. And we have a carrier core with two small gauss cannons. Uh, we can also use two things at guardian point defense. And for our hangars, I put in bombers, but you could do uh, one bomber, one fighter if you so chose. That works as well. Um... I call this the carrier class because I don't really think it's as effective to have two different um, two different uh, battleship designs. I apologize if I just made a bunch of noise. I just wiggled my mic. Uh, I don't think it's terribly efficient to have two battleship designs. One where you have nothing but hangers, and then the other where you have a whole bunch of weapons. I think it's... This is just me personally. I think it's less micromanagement and more effective if you just flat out uh, design a single ship that does both. Because, like, what's the best you can do on this now? You can have an artillery stern with a single large weapon slot. So, like, a single uh, kinetic artillery. And you have, like, way more point defense and flak artillery than you probably ever really need. Um, but that's strictly my, my opinion. Um... We'll go back to the old carrier class. So this still makes use of the Giga Cannon. You still have, you still have Strike Craft. You still have some point defense. And if you want to improve your anti-Strike Craft because you have no flak, slap on a fighter wing or make them both fighter wings. You know, whatever. Do whatever you want. Um, you could even do a broadside stern to throw on two things of flak artillery, and then this becomes a very defensive-oriented kind of battleship. This is just you want your Giga Cannons slapping bad boys from a long range. Uh, doing large amounts of damage at a distance, and then once their little ships, like small corvette-sized ships, close in, you got nice little things called small gauss cannons to totally shred them. Um, again, balanced loadout, uh, two things of armor, three things of shields, regenerative hull tissue, shield capacitor, whatever. Try it, maybe you like it, maybe you don't, whatever. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Scourge, Scourge's Scourge class battleship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know how I came up with these names. Okay, so the Scourge, no shields, uh, but they have a fair amount of armor, so no kinetic weapons in this instance. Again, top end of uh, this stuff. You could probably use a precog interface on the battleship to increase its, um, its tracking and its chance to hit. But in this instance, uh, I've done this particular setup on stream before, where we have a hangar core with, with four flak artillery to blast enemy missiles and strike craft out of the goddamn sky. You got a spinal mount with the tachyon lance, which is fantastic against the Scourge, and a broadside stern with just two medium plasma cannons. 
Uh, why two medium and not a single large? Well, the large does have the better range, but I also want to be able to shoot down the smaller ships with better accuracy and tracking. Uh, because the Takao Lance will totally shred the bigger Scourge ships, no problem. Uh, it's the smaller ships that tend to live longer because we don't have enough small weapons to actually hit them reliably. Um, so I go for this. Um, enough reactors to power everything, two things of regenerative hull tissue, and then six slots of neutronium armor. Um, you could also have, uh, instead of a bomber wing, a fighter wing to further increase your anti-strike craft capabilities. I just like having the bombers because... Uh, if the battleships are able to stay out of range for a while, the bombers could be doing damage um, from a distance as well. And, uh, you know, really help uh, really help shred the enemy uh, Prithoran ships. Because they do have 50% armor ignore. Why the Tachyon Lance over a Mega Cannon, Mobius? The Mega Cannon and Slash Giga Cannon still has 50% armor ignore. And uh, actually can do more damage per shot. And... Uh, you know, all, the, all that good stuff. Well, yeah, because the Tachyon Lance has this special thing called 90% armor ignore. So almost all of the damage it does in a, in a single shot um, is going straight to the the hull points of the Prothoran ship. The more damage you do to directly to their hull points, uh, the faster they die, the quicker you defeat them. The less da and you know the more ships you kill in your first couple alpha strikes before the enemy scourge ships start shooting at you, uh, the less damage they can do back to you. The longer your ships can stay in the fight, the more likely you are to defeat their fleets. Okay, uh, unbidden, uninvited. <laughs> um, this was just a suggest. This was just kind of an idea I had. Um, again, best stuff you can throw on there. Ascension combat computer works, but. Uh, we, as we saw in the Blorg stream, I used a precog interface to increase the accuracy, or sorry, the tracking and the chance to hit, I do believe. And that worked great. Spinal mount, I did uh, in this particular save. I have the focused arc emitter because it 100% ignores armor and shields. Uh, it shoots a, it shoots an enemy as doing damage direct, directly to their hull. The rest is all kinetic artillery. Artillery core, artillery stern. So, you know, still slapping them with the long range weapons. Uh... Lots of shields, as many shields as you can. Two things of shield capacitors, but you still need you still need enough reactors to power it all. Um, I do kind of recommend going more towards the Giga Cannon on top of kinetic artillery because the problem with the focused arc emitter is that sometimes its damage is really piss poor. As you can see, the damage value is anywhere between one to two hundred and twenty-one. So. You might have your focused arc emitters all shooting at unbidden ships from way outside their range, but they're all doing like 20 points of damage, which sucks. Then again, you have the Giga Cannon, which is a guaranteed 121 damage, and it's got a, even more range. So this worked stupid well in that Blorg stream, if any of you can recall that. So I definitely recommend taking the Giga Cannon route with nothing but kinetic artillery as backup. And spam the crap out of this battleship design against the Unbidden. It worked so well. I was thoroughly impressed. I was very disappointed that the shield penetration designs didn't work so well dealing with the Unbidden. That was very unfortunate. Um, but there's that. Um, let's see. What did we have left? Oh, the, the I Want That class battleship. So we're using jump drives. We have dragon scale armor. We have size shields. We're using them. Spinal mount bow with a tachyon lance, broadside core with uh, two large and two medium plasma cannons and a broadside stern with two things of flak artillery to deal with enemy um, strike craft, if they have any. Two shield capacitors because this is leaning more towards shield defenses, but the shield regen on large psionic shields is pretty good. Uh, so two shield capacitors will increase that even more. So instead of just a measly... 25.8 uh, shield regen. We now have about uh, 51.6 shield regen. And then two things of dragon scale armor is enough to pump up the armor value up to 77%. Which is pretty dope. Eh, this is kind of just an idea. If you get the relevant technologies like enigmatic, enigmatic deflectors or large sonic shields plus dragon scale armor... Whatever. Maybe this is something you want to try. Um, very very heavily anti-armor, but eh, 
this will combo really well with the previous cruiser and corvette designs that i went over that have neutron torpedo launchers um your corvettes and cruisers are in their face using more anti-shield weapons so they're lining them up while your battleships are knocking them down with these tachyon lances um, it, it's effective and that mostly sums it up we'll go over fallen empires in a minute because i had to uh print some stuff off for that um, so yeah, the big thing is if you are using multiple ships, and I don't mean like multiple ship designs, I mean multiple ships. If you plan on using corvettes plus destroyers plus cruisers plus battleships, you don't want to specifically tailor each ship to be like, oh man, it's got to, it's got to be good. It's got to be good against this. You know, like this one is like really good anti-armor and it's like, oh, okay, well all the, it's like, okay, well this ship also needs some anti-shield capabilities. I got to throw on some phase disruptors or something like that. No, you don't need to worry about that. If you are equipping things like your cruisers, uh, maybe not that one. Like that, you know, maybe not that one either. Where is it? Uh, there we go. Torpedes class cruiser. Uh, like this guy. If this is your cruiser setup that you're going to go with, well, then your battleship doesn't necessarily need to worry about uh, knocking down enemy shields, especially if you're also using uh, corvettes that also have neutron torpedoes. Why do you need to worry about your battleships having anti-shield weapons? Just throw on plasma cannons, tachyon lances, and you'll be fine. Your corvettes are in the middle of things, swarming the enemy, hitting them with neutron torpedoes, doing lots of damage to their shields. Your cruisers are up in there mixing things up, doing lots of damage to enemy shields with their, tor with their neutron torpedoes as well, and even their plasma cannons. And then your battleships are like, hey, this guy d doesn't have shields. Let's uh, get uh, 18 tachyon lances vaporizing it. Pshew! Oh, he's dead. You know, that works too. Um, I probably should have prefaced this. Look, these were all design suggestions. I'm not going to say that, it, that you know, it, this is exactly what's going to happen. This is exactly what you should build every, every time. This is exactly what it's going to look like every time. You should do this all the time because the best thing to do and it's all it's just, it's amazing, man. That is not what I'm saying. Not at all. And if you think I'm saying that, I have lost faith in you. Um, like I said, the best thing to do is um, specifically counter to deal with your enemy. Uh, if they're using lots of shields, use more anti-shield weapons like phase disruptors, um, mass, mass drivers like gauss cannons and the, and the like because those have bonuses to shield damage, even kinetic artillery. If they're using lots of armor, uh, plasma cannons, gamma lasers, lasers, even stormfire auto cannons have an armor ignore. Um, I do not recommend using missiles at all in late game. And frankly, uh, devastator torpedoes are outclassed by new neutron torpedoes because neutron torpedoes do not get shot down by point defense or, or flak as well. So there's that too. Um, those are the only two things I would say I would uh, never really suggest ever doing is use devastator torpedoes instead of neutron torpedoes and use and use missiles in the late game. Uh -uh. I think those are both very dumb. Um, that's just me. You're free to argue. I don't really care. Uh, but, 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 um, and again, if as I said, if you're not specifically tailoring your ships, do what you want. Like I just said, I don't really care. It's up to you. Again, it's your game. Do what you like. Do what you think seems cool. Do what you think seems fun. Um, ultimately, regardless, like any ship design, except for ships with no weapons, of course, because you can do that. Any ship design will work against your enemy if you have enough ships. If you have 16,000 uh, cruisers and they look like this, they have six medium plasma cannons, this will still work against an enemy fleet of only, you know, 500 ships that uses a butt ton of shields because you have way more ships than they do. It's as simple as that. It's it's more, you know, a lot of, at some point it comes down more to numbers than it does actual designs. How on console can you see what weapons or armor shield mix an enemy is using? Like I said earlier, dude, you have to uh, uh, see them in a battle. Um, and when you're in a battle, you open up... You know how there's that red crosshair thing indicating that your ships are in battle? You open that up, and then it's got the... It's got that battle... I can't bring it up because I cannot show you an example. 
But you bring up that battle screen where it shows like the status of their ships, the status of your ships, the status of the battle in that. You move your cursor over to their side, which is the list of their ships, and you press the A button. And it brings up, if it's a regular AI empire, it brings up their ship design. And you can see exactly what they have equipped on their ships. So you need to go through the different types of uh, ships in their fleet one by one and just check. But if you don't know beforehand and it's like, well, now I'm in a war, what do I do? Like I said, um, build a really cheap... Um, on PC, it appears like you can see them before battle, but perhaps I have misunderstood. You can in PC. Uh, you can in console too, but again, you have to see them in an actual battle, uh, even if it's not one you're participating in. Um... If worse comes to worse, uh, go into ship designer, go new design, build a Corvette, uh, just give it like hyperdrive one, basic combat computer, chemical thrusters, ship mounted radar, blah, blah, blah. Do interceptor type and throw on a single, a single small fission reactor. This ship will cost 50 minerals. That's the base cost. This ship will cost 50 minerals to make, which is nothing. 60 days build time. It, it, it has no weapons, so it's super cheap. Build it, send it over to the enemy fleet before it gets destroyed. Pause the game, see what they have. Um, easiest, most practical, most straightforward way to do it. Um, okay, so before we close out, I actually had some notes on Fallen Empires here. Um, so, Fallen Empires and Awakened Empires, their ship designs do not change. And their ship designs are dependent on the kind of Fallen Empire uh, that it is. Um, they use different ships from regular empires, as you can tell, because their ships look different, but also their ships are designed drastically different as well. Um, now, Fallen Empires have three types of combat ships that you'll see. They have their escorts, uh, which tend to be the, the ones that uh, are like destroyer size. With, with the two dots. They have battle cruisers, which is basically a battleship. And then they have the Titan, which is something that we cannot have yet, but essentially it's bigger than a battleship. Um, don't, it's, it's not like automated dreadnought size. It, uh, it's not like automated dreadnought in terms of like scale and size and power, I don't think. Um, but they're bigger than a battleship. They're more powerful than a battleship. Uh, the Titan across all fallen empires has what's called a titan laser i believe the actual weapon is called the perdition beam um and it essentially one shots a battleship i do believe uh but it has very long recharge so keep that in mind now the keepers of knowledge which is the materialist um the materialist uh fallen empire um Hang on. I'm just going to do, do, do. So I'm just going to do a... Actually, you know what? No. Let's not do that. Let's just go straight to battleship design. Screw it. So this... We're just going to dub this the FE class for Fallen Empire. Boop. And I'll go over some ideas for things to use. So the Keepers of Knowledge, which is the materialist Fallen Empire. Their Titan, which is called the Alpha class. It has a Titan laser. It has... Two bomber and two fighter hangers, four large lasers, four large disruptors, four medium lasers, and then that that's all its weapons. Its utility components are eight large reactors, which is for power, six large armor, six large shields, three shield capacitors, and a battleship computer. Okay, so in terms of weapons, uh, that leans a little bit more towards anti-armor because it has more lasers than it has disruptors. And defense-wise, it's even in terms of armor and shields. But let's continue. Uh, the battle cruiser, which is called the Beta class, two bomber and two fighter hangers, one tac one XL tachyon lance or particle lance, but it's a fallen empire, so tachyon lance, uh, two large disruptors, uh, four medium lasers. And then four reactors, three large armor, three large shields, two shield capacitors, and a destroyer computer. Um, and the and the escort, which is called the Gamma class, one large disruptor, four small lasers, two point defense, four medium reactors, three medium armor, three medium shields, one shield capacitor, destroyer computer. Um, so 
I wrote down that my suggestion for this would be anti-shield or shield bypass weapons uh, for corvettes and cruisers, and then giga cannon battleships with kinetic artillery more than likely because uh, they don't have a lot of long range weapons outside the Titan laser and the tachyon lance. Even the large lasers, um, even the large lasers only have a range of about uh, 80. If I recall right, let's see, gamma laser. Oh, 70. Never mind. The phase disruptors, which uh, the large, sorry, the large disruptors, which is only on the Titan and the battle cruiser, or sorry, the escort has one too. Okay. So the disruptors, which are their large, in large slots, they have better range than the large lasers. Um, and then a lot of their lasers are on smaller slots. Uh, so outranging them is actually pretty pretty effective with your own battleships. Uh, fighters and flak where possible. Slightly more shields for defenses because when the when you're we Moby can't talk. When your ships actually get closer and uh, you know this the scuffling gets much more short range or what you, you normally want to do which is uh, have their fleet or your fleet jump right on top of yours they actually do have more lasers than disruptors so you do want to lean a little bit more towards shields when dealing with the materialist fallen empire you know kind of kind of like so oops not that. there we go um, also note that they have they have, they are very fairly even in terms of actual defenses uh, because they have equal armor and shield slots. However, all three of their ship designs use shield capacitors. Um, so like I said, anti-shield or shield bypass weapons. So probably like neutron torpedo cruisers, neutron torpedo corvettes, and then destroyers and battleships with um, kinetic artillery where possible. Uh, and smaller weapons, phase disruptors, maybe. Um, and like I said, more sh more shields than armor. So this would be an interesting battleship setup that w actually could be effective um, against the materialist fallen empire. Um, so like I said, they, they tend to have the more balanced kind of loadout compared to the other fallen empires. And they also have more strike craft. Um, while all the Titans have two bomber and two fighter hangers, the materialist, the Keepers of Knowledge or the materialist Fallen Empire, they're the only ones who have the battle, who have their battle cruisers with two bomber and two fighter hangers. The rest only have one each on their battle cruisers. These guys have two each on their battle cruisers. So that's quite a fair bit of strike craft. So you probably still want to use uh, anti strike craft like flak artillery a fair bit on you know cruisers destroyers and maybe even your battleships a little bit um so that's what i wrote down for the materialist fallen empire the keepers the keepers of law knowledge now let's talk about the holy guardians which is the spiritualist fallen empire so their titan is called the eternal class it has one titan laser two bomber and two fighter hangers so those all sound very familiar uh eight large missiles four medium plasma Eight large reactors, six large armor, six large shields, three shield capacitors, and a battleship precognitive interface. Remember that precog interface. Their battle cruiser is called the Avatar class. One bomber and one fighter hangar. So, like I said, only one compared to the materialists. Two. Uh, they ha they use the Archimeter instead of the Tachyon Lance. Two large plasma, four medium swarmer missiles. Four large reactors, three large armor, three large shields, two shield capacitors, precognitive interface computer. Uh, their escorts, zealot class, one energy torpedo, so basically a neutron torpedo, four small plasma, two point defense, four medium reactors, three medium shields, three medium armor, one shield capacitor, precognitive interface computer. Um, so what I noted was that these ships, the spiritualist fallen empire awakened empire they actually have high tracking because all of their ships use the precognitive interface computer i wish i could show it to you here but i can't um so you don't want to try stacking evasion against this fallen empire that does work against um the other fallen empires and even better against the xenophobe i do believe um but not in this case because all of their ships and their ships weapons have pretty good tracking uh, stack shields for defenses to protect against plasma. Now, uh, the only real anti-shield weapon 
that the holy guardians or the spiritualist uh, fall empires use is the energy torpedo on their escort cat class. Yes, their battle cruisers have arc emitters, which penetrate shields and all that jazz. Um, but there's nothing you can do about those um, defense-wise. So stack shields because their uh, their escorts have lots of energy torpedoes. But those are the only anti-shield weapons. Everything else is plasma. Their Titan has a bunch of plasma. Their battle cruisers have a bunch of plasma. Um, well, two large plasma, I should say. And then their escorts have four small plasma. So they have lots of plasma weapons. Energy torpedoes on corvettes and cruisers as well. Plus point defense and fighters. And the reason why I wrote that down is because if there is a Titan, they do have some basic missiles. However, most of the missiles they're using are medium swarmer missiles. Um, so still, the fighters would come in handy because their battle cruisers have uh, strike craft. Um, your own battleships can use the XL of choice. So rather than your own far, uh, rather than your own, I almost said focused arc emitter, but that came out very weird. Um, probably try outranging them with a giga cannon. And then uh, in terms of your battleships, let's see. I wouldn't necessarily say a carrier core, probably a hangar core. And then an artillery stern. So you throw on a large... Again, they have even defenses in terms of armor and shields, but they still have the shield capacitors. So maybe a little bit more leaning towards anti-shield weapons. But then again, like I said, neutron torpedoes on cruisers and corvettes will help with that. So you could throw in a large plasma on the back of this. Two, pl two more plasma cannons in the center. And then two things of flak artillery to deal with strike craft. Plus an advanced fighter wing to further deal with enemy strike craft. Oops, not neutronium armor, you dingling. What are you doing? Enough to power this thing. And then, as I said, shields, shields, shields. Because... They have a bunch of plasma weapons. You know, something like that for the spiritualist uh, fallen empire. Uh, let's move on. Militant isolationists. This is the xenophobic fallen empire. Uh, so, they're, so they're Titan, the Imperium class. Again, one Titan laser, two bomber, and two fighter hangers. You've heard that before. Eight kinetic artillery, four flak batteries. Eight large reactors, six large armor, five, five large shields, one afterburner, three shield capacitors, battleship computer. Ba the battle cruiser called the Supremacy Class. One bomber and fighter hangers. They have the mega cannon or giga cannon in their XL slot. Two kinetic artillery, four flak battery, four large reactors, four large armor, two large shields, one afterburner, one shield capacitor, and a cruiser computer. So it drastically increases their rate of fire. The Escort, or Glory Class. One Kinetic Artillery, four small auto cannons, two point defense, four medium reactors, three medium shields, three medium armor, one afterburner, and a cruiser computer. Uh, so all of these, all of their ships have afterburners. They will close the distance quickly, which is kind of ironic because all of their ships have kinetic artillery and their battle cruisers use the mega cannon. So the big suggestion here is getting close. Their ships all have good ranged weapons. A lot of their firepower comes out of their kinetic artillery. Not all of it, but quite a lot of it. Their battle cruisers have two kinetic artillery each, and their escorts have one each. So that's a lot of kinetic artillery. You want to get in close, use your own short range, short range weapons, and most of their short range weapons are flak artillery, especially on their battle cruisers. Uh, they have. Um, some auto cannons on their escort classes as well. Uh, evasion will help against low tracking because, again, their kinetic artillery does not have terribly good tracking. Uh, anti armor weapons are preferable due to higher armor components. As you may recall, their battle cruisers, uh, or sorry, their, their Titan, I should say, has six armor, five large shields, um, and their battle cruiser has four large armor and two large shields. Their escorts are more balanced with three medium shields and three medium armor. Um, but because overall their defenses have more armor, you want to use more anti-armor weapons. Uh, lots of flak do not use strike craft. So they have lots of flak. Every battlecruiser has four flak batteries. Don't use strike craft. They also have two point defense on every escort. Corvettes with energy torpedoes and plasma 
destroyers with flak and plasma, cruisers with energy torpedoes and plasma, battleships with particle lance and plasma. So, tachyon lance. Uh, you could probably just use more plasma here. Uh, do, 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 do. I'd actually recommend broadside core and then an artillery stern. That would be my suggestion. So they still have a bunch of strike craft, uh, as do all the fallen empires. Um, so, I mean, if you wanted, if you so wanted, do, 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 flak artillery, ba -da -ba -do. but I would probably put those on things like cruisers and destroyers and then just slap more guns on your battle cruisers. Um, so their actual weapons, since kinetic artillery is more effective against shields, you want to lean a little bit more towards armor. Do, 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 do. Um, probably just do like crystal infused or since I, unfortunately, since I don't have it, crystal forged plating. Put one of those on plus regenerative hull tissue. Uh, I think I have too much armor on, honestly. <laughs> uh, maybe not that much. There. Okay, there we go. So, probably still put on some shields, right? There we go. Maybe something like that. While the kinetic artillery um, does have some armor ignored, they're better against um, shields. So you don't want to use too many shields, if any at all. Um, plus, they also use the mega cannon, which 50% um, armor ignore, 33% shield damage. Um, so yeah, they'll still have good armor ignored strictly because of, their, of the mega cannon slash giga cannon. Um, but, you know, not much you can do about that. They have more kinetic artillery than they have mega cannons, really. So, um, bit of a bit of an even mix defense-wise, but you want to lean a little bit more towards armor, I would say. Um, okay, and lastly, the Enigmatic Observer, Xenophile. Oh, sorry, as I said, Militant Isolationists, you want to get in close. This is the best Fallen Empire, uh, to jump right, your fleet right on top of theirs, or vice versa, have theirs jump right on top of yours. That's the best Fallen Empire to do that tactic against. The Enigmatic Observers, these are the Xenophile um, Fallen Empire. Christ, it's been over two hours already. Um, their Titan is called the Keeper Class. It has a Titan Laser, two Bomber, and Fighter Hangers. No surprise there. Eight Kinetic Artillery. Four Medium Lasers. Eight Large Reactors. Six Large Armor. Six Large Shields. Three Shield Capacitors. Battleship Computer. Um... The battle cruiser is the custodian class. One bomber and fighter hangar, as with everything, as with all the other fallen empires, uh, they use tachyon lances, two large lasers, four medium mass drivers, four large reactors, three large armor, three large shields, two shield capacitors, and destroyer computer. And then the escort is called the warden class. Warden class, excuse me. They have a, they have one kinetic artillery, two small mass drivers, two small lasers, two point defense. Four medium reactors, three medium shields, three medium armor, one shield capacitor, destroyer computer. Uh, so my suggestion on this one, they don't have as many long-range weapons as the xenophobes, um, but still, lots of escorts means lots of kinetic artillery. Because uh, usually you'll see, if they have like 20 battle cruisers, they have like 40 escorts. So that's still 40 kinetic artillery blasting at you from a long range. Uh, you go for more range as well with lots of kinetic artillery and giga cannon battleships. Their defenses are fairly balanced. Uh, they do use shield capacitors, but still their, their actual defensive slots are even. Um, you'll want to use more armor for defenses as, as there are more mass drivers at short range than anything else. Uh, despite their Titan having um, four medium lasers and no mass drivers, uh, if they have a Titan, it's only the one. And their battle cruisers have two large lasers plus four medium mass drivers. So more guns, more mass driver guns means they have better anti-shield capabilities. Um, also the small, the small weapons on the escort, two small mass drivers and two small lasers. So um, more, more armor would be preferable. Their lasers will still, you know, do some damage against it. Um, but lean a little bit more towards armor with those guys. Not much need for flak or fighters at long range, so equip less than other designs and slap on more guns. Uh, corvettes and cruisers can use energy torpedoes to bypass point defense. 
So yes, they do have some point defense on their escorts, uh, two each, as a matter of fact. Um, so definitely don't use, you know, missiles and torpedoes. <laughs> um, you could bypass, you could forego your own uh, strike craft altogether and just put on some flak for yourself. So I would say Giga Cannon Battleship, engage them at range. Let's do a broadside core and go to flak artillery here. Artillery stern. Actually, I don't know why I'm doing this and not just an artillery core. Oh, right, because I'm stupid. Um, but yeah, something like this. Um, you you could you can still put on some shields uh, because you know their lasers aren't so great against shields, but their big heavy hitters like the kinetic artillery uh, and uh, and the like is um, is better against shields. Um, that being that being said, they've got a they've got a pretty even mix because they have their escorts that have a lot of kinetic artillery, which are better against shields and still have some armor ignore. However, their battle cruisers have two large lasers and the tachyon lance, so a fairly balanced setup here defense wise um, wouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Um, you know, try to hang back at your own range. Just do more damage than them at long range with more long range weapons. I, I would wager that that could work quite well. These guys, <clears throat> you might want to uh, avoid getting in close because um, they're a lot of their short range weapons. Mobius, why I went offline? No, I didn't. Because a lot of their short range weapons are mass drivers, which have a high rate of fire, and that can do that can do a lot of damage. Uh, pretty quickly. So, probably want to not jump on top of these guys, although it is still um, somewhat effective against this Fallen Empire. Um, actually, all the Fallen Empires it kind of works against. But these guys, you're probably better off staying at range because that uh, eliminates about half of their effective firepower uh, because all of those short-range mass drivers and, sh and small lasers and stuff on their escorts... Um, are not going to come into play. Um, but yeah, you know, try to find something that works for you. If, if there's other advice out there uh, that you can find, um, you know, give it a shot. Um, if I don't know what I'm talking about, I don't know, call me names, whatever you feel like. But like I said, the point of this whole thing was to just to give people ideas for ship designs, not say these are the best of ship designs in, in the entire game. These are the be all end all. You need to follow these to a T or you'll suck for the rest of your Stellaris life. Brr. No, I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> um, as I've said repeatedly, the best thing to do is counter build. Period. Um, I highly recommend using energy weapons as much as possible. So plasma, disruptors, neutron torpedoes, um, tachyon lances, because those weapons, you have specific types. The plasma weapons are specifically anti-armor, because they all have pretty good armor ignore. The disruptors are specifically anti-shield, because they have huge damage bonuses to shields. Um, and your neutron torpedoes are also anti-shield um, with their huge shield damage bonus. And then, of course, there's the tachyon lance, which is anti-armor. I highly recommend sticking to energy weapons because I've gone over this before. It's a lot easier to enhance those things' power. Um, they, they, you can you can specifically tailor your ships for anti-shield or anti-armor weapons, or do a mix of both if you want to go a more balanced approach uh, within your fleet. Um, and, uh, the repeatables, I've said this before, the, the repeatables in the physics tree to improve energy weapon attack speed and, uh, damage, they'll be more frequent than in, than for kinetic weapons in the engineering tree. Because like I said, once you complete something like gravitational analysis, which is, you won't see it anymore after grade five. Then you have applied superconductivity and shield harmonics, which are pretty much the only other two useful physics repeatables. The the ones for energy weapons are flash coolant and focusing arrays. Um, so that's four potential physics physics repeatables that you can research. 
prioritize the energy weapon and energy, uh, uh, attack speed and damage mo uh, ones, flash coolant and focusing array. But if shield harmonics or applied superconductivity pops up, you can do those as well. Or a gravitational analysis if you haven't completed it yet. It's actually pretty handy to reduce the cost of buildings. Um, there's one in the physics tree that I would suggest avoiding all the time. And that, it's, it's not here, but it's called... Uh, I can't remember, but it increases the sensor range of your planets. That is like the most useless repeatable in the whole game. Don't bother with it. I mean, even in this example, you're seeing right here, we're researching applied superconductivity, but we can get flash coolant or focusing arrays or shield harmonics if we so chose to improve the um, power of our ships. You know, go nuts. Um, I think I really, really, really think I'm starting to babble now. But anyways, I really hope that I got the point across with this uh, long-ass stream, and in particular this video. Um, at the very least, I hope it gave you some ideas. Like I said, these aren't like these are not the be-all, end-all, follow these ship designs to a T all the time, and you'll do awesome all the time. Absolutely not. If you follow my ship designs uh, to the T all the time, every time, uh, you'll probably find yourself uh, losing battles more than winning them, to be totally honest. Um, build a suicide corvette, fly after your enemy, um, see what they're using. And like I said, try the suggestions that I gave for the fallen empires because their ship designs do not change. Um, uh, fingers, fingers crossed that they work for you because, uh, in a lot of cases they have for me, that's not a be all end all. And like I said, um, most of any ship design, if you do, if you just want to go with, you know, what you think looks cool and what you think uh, sounds fun, by all means. And if you have the economy to support, you know, a thousand battleships with a really stupid, idiotic design. If you have a thousand battleships to the enemy's, you know, 500 ships, you might still win the fight, even if it's a crappy battleship design. So whatever. All right, I'm going to shut up. It's um, it's been a while. Going on two hours and just just under two and a half hours for tonight's stream. But obviously, I'm going to break this up into two parts to upload to YouTube. So those of you who came by the stream, thank you very much. Uh, less than normal, which is fine. Probably got people uh, gearing up for the weekend. Uh, Joe Frogman, thanks for popping by. Um, ready, st ready, Daddy Spaghetti. And we also had uh, Evil Evil Craze. Thanks for coming by. Those of you watching on YouTube, I hope this was somewhat helpful to some degree. If it wasn't, sure, yell at me. I don't really care. Um, like I said, I, I, at most, I hope it just kind of gave you some ideas of how you want to go about designing your ships. Um, I don't really want people following everything I do to the letter because that ruins a lot of the fun, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah. See what happens. Let me know. Uh, this is Moby Spy signing off. If you watch this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel for more uh, Stellaris Console Edition content. Dig on my dongle so you are alerted when I upload more videos. Check out the other playlists. There's my Let's Play series, which I upload a new video to at least once a week because I'll jump in on Tuesdays and uh, stream the stream games where I only play that particular save file on stream. Um, there's also my Twitch channel, which I streamed this off of. Uh, the link to that is in the description below. You'll also find the link to my Twitter feed, great way to keep in touch with me, and lastly, a link to the Discord channel where you can pop in and uh, talk about Stellaris Console Edition with other Stellaris Console Edition players. We have people from both PS4 and Xbox One, so if you want to set up some multiplayer games, you can do that too. Ask questions, discuss ideas, whatever floats your boat. Um, yeah. I'm going to take off because I'm really hungry. <laughs> Hope to see you folks again real soon. I'll be back with another Stellaris Console Edition stream on Tuesday. And, uh, yeah. Take care, everybody. Stay safe.